Welcome to Side Effects. Effect versus Affect. It's hard to know the difference. At McGowan Braybender, our goal is to provoke you to think differently about employee benefits, your employees, and the status quo. That's why it's Side Effects with an A. Join me, Kenzie McEvely, an MB co-host and one of the industry's brightest guests to dive deep into the process of good employee benefits. Let's get started. The Great Resignation, also known as the Big Quit. It's an ongoing economic trend that began in early 2021, where employees have voluntarily resigned due to many factors. Low pay amid the rising cost of living, economic freedom provided by stimulus payments, ongoing job dissatisfaction, and safety concerns of COVID-19. The pandemic has allowed workers to rethink their careers, work conditions, and long-term goals. Which brings us to today's topic. What do employers have to do to attract talent? How can they keep employees happy? And how is the generational shift affecting the workforce? To help answer some of these questions, we asked President and CEO of Employers Resource Association, Michael Denisoff, to join us on today's show. Michael has over three decades of HR expertise and excels in impacting companies through business leadership. He is known to deliver real financial results, raving fan customers, innovation, a high-performing culture, and a tremendous employee experience. Without further delay, let's welcome Michael to Side Effects. Hello, everyone. Scott, thank you for joining me today down in our Cincinnati office. It's a great day. Changing up the location a little bit. Yeah, it's nice. And we have Michael, our very special guest. Thank you for joining us. Hello, thanks for having we me. We wanted to be a little closer to where you are. So we thought the Sharonville office was a good choice. I, I wanted to see the office, so thank yep. you. Perfect, perfect. Nice sunny day. Beautiful day out there for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael, we have a great relationship with ERA. So maybe just help for our listeners, just kind of like unpack ERA. Yeah, you know, in short, ERA is a bunch of HR experts. We're a uh, association, nonprofit association that takes care of our members uh, through HR excellence. So we do things like HR consulting, HR advising, leadership development, uh, employee development, AAPs, really most everything under the sun about uh, internal HR. And so we t- t- technically f- focus on um, small and medium-sized businesses, and, you know, we show up for them. I like to think we're like the SWAT team or the backstop. We're there for you. We're all grounded in our, our really our t- super invaluable HR hotline. So that means anybody, one of our members can call us and have a question or they want to validate something that they're thinking or they don't know what they don't know. It's a great place to start. But we really uh, thrive on serving our members for sure. Well, thanks for everything that you do for us and our customers as well. Back at you. I like the SWAT team reference. Very good. Well, Never heard a, of that. There's a lot changing between COVID and the great resignation. There's a lot changing in a, uh, HR right now, almost by the day right. sometimes. Right. And that's exactly why we brought you in. When we were brainstorming this topic, we're like, the great resignation, everyone hears about it, podcast, TV, it's all over the news. And we're like, we might as well bring in the best expert of HR. And then we thought of you. Oh, that's very kind of you. Yeah. Thank you. So can you tell tell our listeners, you know, we hear this word all the time, but what what is the great resignation? How is it affecting employers right now? The great resignation is having a huge impact on employers right now. Matter of fact, I, I can't go almost an hour or two a day <laughs> without hear, hearing from a member or a client asking about this because yep. they're losing their employees. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's this mass migration of people kind of some of them are just kind of tired out from the toxic, toxic nature of, of companies. So companies, some companies have been operating for a long time with a lot of promises, but not a lot of delivery on the, on the uh, value proposition. Two, I would tell you, some mm-hmm. people just want to try something different. Matter of fact, I, I had an employee, I'm a, a client, and they're a manufacturing client. And they had an employee who they loved. The employee loved them. They were being paid fair, worked there for 15 years, and then came to the office one day and said, you know what, I just want to try something different. So some people want to try something different, you know, like what? So that's a, a big deal. Some folks are, are just looking at a different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I'm hearing a lot of folks, you know, there's, if you saw the movie Nomad Land, right? People are just looking for something different. Um, so I think that's a part of it. You're also noticing a, um, just this really interesting social change. Um, in, uh, if you go on Reddit, there's, there's multiple anti-work sites about telling people how to get out of work and not work wow. and survive. Um, and also, in, even in China, they have this thing called uh, uh, Ting Peng, which is basically to lie down. So you're seeing the younger generation there saying, we're tired of work, we're tired of the long hours, and we don't want to go to work. 
Um, sometimes they call it a spiritual effort, but they're really just staying home and playing video games. True. Mm. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of things that are going on right now to cause this, including, because we're going to talk about different generations, FOMO, right? So all oh, yeah. the stories about <laughs> yeah. um, this great resignation mm-hmm. makes people wonder like, am I missing out? Should I, should I try a different job? Should I, is there something else out there for me? Because people are, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, pay rates are going high. So you're seeing that as well. So I, I, I think that's, you know, interesting. Obviously, the pandemic um, amplified and accelerated a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And this was one of them. People were kind of tired of work. Working from home was a thing that a lot of companies were trying with, but then they had to get good at it real quick. So yep. yeah, so it's just really migration and it's it's really unsolved right now. I just, a random thought there was, do, do you think people are like, you know, life is short? Is that something that they're like, I don't want to be in this job anymore? COVID made him realize that? I love that question. Yes, absolutely. So I think I think the pandemic gave people a lot of time to rethink their lives. Yeah. Um, a lot of people said they, in some ways, they were okay with the pandemic because they got to spend more time with their families working from home. Mm-hmm. We usually just kind of hear the other side of it with the kids drive them nuts or, you know, <laughs> there's no boundaries at home. But a lot of people really enjoyed the process. So mm-hmm. I, I think I think that's a big part of it. And I would add to it, I, I think, you know, we have TED Talks now. People know what good business should be, or they hear about it a lot. You have the Brene Browns of the world, right? Or the uh, Simon Sinek's, right? And so their expectations are higher, and it's really not worth it for a lot of people. And I'll give you a good example. I was talking to uh, this young man the other day. He's a vendor. I'm going to hire him to do something for me. And he left a very lucrative job um, on TV, of all things. Mm. And I said, you know, we were talking about the subject, actually. And he said, I said, why'd you leave? He said, man, the pay was great, but I walked away from it because I didn't want to deal with it anymore. Deal with the, the infighting, the politics, the toxic nature of, of his company. And he walked away and he started I was his own blown company. away by, I, I read, McKenzie did a report and a study that 38% of the people that have left have no other job. No. Just e. a complete like checkout, which it blows me away. And it might even be like my generation. Per, it's probably very likely my <laughs> generation, yep. why, that just, why I react to that. Yeah, I think oftentimes we see generation, it kind of goes up, it bubbles up, mm-hmm. right? At first, you know, it's like, what, what's going on? And then all the generations are now like, hey, you're right, maybe work isn't worth it or mm-hmm. how it is now, how it's structured. So absolutely, I think um, I, I think that's a part of it. I think you'll see particularly younger generations, you're seeing the third wave of the gig economy. So this 1099 economy where people kind of want to work on their own, they yeah. want to turn it on and they want to turn it off. A matter of fact, I was taking an Uber, Uber ride the other day and I met this interesting fella. He's probably 30 years old. And I, I was like, we're just talking because, you know, me, I could talk to a doorknob. I'd be happy. <laughs> but uh, I asked him and he said, oh, yeah, I'm, me and my wife, we work seven jobs each. I'm like, like Uber and Lyft and a couple other ones. I'm like, yeah. I said, that's kind of insane. What, what, what are you doing? He's like, oh, no, for two months, we work really hard. And then we take three months off. Yeah. Because that's what you want to do. Because we don't want to be too old before we explore the world. So they're really into travel. And I'm like, I totally get that. Which, by yeah. the way, is a very... Um, millennial and, and Zed or, or Zoomer te- um, thing. They, they want to have yeah. experiences over things. So, so yeah, I think that option is open to them. So in regards to Zoomers, yeah. like what are some of the things that like makes them want to stay at a job? E. Yeah, I think Zoomers, Zoomers are really interesting. So put it in the context of the millennials. So we, we had uh, the millennials who had had this new, new way of looking at the world um, they were definitely into meaningful jobs. They wanted to make a difference. They saw job as a community mm-hmm. for sure. They ushered in this, this new focus on DEI and, and then, and some probably took it too far because there was almost this, I remember, I, I think I shared this with you earlier, mm-hmm. you know, when the millennials came in the workforce, they had unrealistic expectations for it. 50% of millennials that were living at home after college, um, because the prices were too high. And there was this extension almost of their adolescence where, where I talked to many HR people when the, the millennials first hit the workforce where their parents would call them in sick or complain about their own performance review. You did share that. I did, and right? I was yeah. like, oh man. Yeah. So we've had that, that happen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had that. So you had the millennials do it. But, the, but there's a lot of good things about the millennials, right? Mm-hmm. Which is they're very idealistic. They, they would rather have experience over things. They care about the world, which are really good things. Which we're finding with the millennials, there are some overlap. You'll, you'll see the, the, excuse me, the Zoomers uh, actually overlap with them. They, they care about the world. They want to make a difference. But the things that really set the, the Zoomers apart is they're actually competitive, which we didn't see really with the millennials. They, they're very independently minded. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And uh, also, th- they have a, a, an even more unique relationship with technology. So te- te- technology was for them as they were becoming self-aware right. as babies. Right. Right? So they just, they just know it. They, it exudes out of them. So technology is, a, is a, a big part of them. I think I was sharing this with you as well. Uh, one of my, one of my uh, folks, our director of, of learning, she has a son, and she, she remarked one day, she was watching him. He was on his computer mm-hmm. taking a class at school, I aming his friends, researching the subject, and ordering Grubhub at the same time. And this is just so natural to them. And he was like, what, 12? He was 12, right? So the, I didn't even have low, a phone when I was 12. The low end of the Zoomers, yeah. right? No, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. I, could, I could get a VCR to work when I was 12, <laughs> except it's kept on blinking 12. Anyway, <laughs> so you asked the question, what's important to them? Well, think about that profile. So I, in, in two words, I would say it would be flexibility and autonomy. So the flexibility comes out, man, I kind of want to work from home. Working from yeah. home is, is, is normal. Now, they like a hybrid more. They still want to connect to people. But the expectation is to work remotely. So I think that's a big one. I mean, even my mom to this day, she, she says every, at the end of every month, are you guys going back into the office next <laughs> month? No, mom, we're yeah. never going to go back to the office full time again. Never, yeah. never again. Um, so I think that flexibility is a big thing. The other part of it would be autonomy. So they really want to kind of organize their, the way they work. They want to have some say in who they work with mm-hmm. and how it gets done. So for a Zoomer, really, um, you know, it, it, it would be, man, this let me do my work. If I want to do it at 2 o'clock in the morning on the beaches, beaches of yeah. uh, Bora Bora, yep. let me do it, and I'll deliver it to you. So I, I think that's a big, big, big part of them. Again, self-directed, independent. They want some connection, right? But they, they really want to... Uh, you know, kind of control their own destiny for sure. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So for our listeners, I like how we've named the Gen Zers, the Zoomers. Zoomers. Can you explain the different generations and what their nicknames are and age age ranges? I can. I'll have to, I'll have to look down I'm quizzing on this one. you. Yeah, so you have the Boomers, which is the older generation, right? Yep. So they would be, actually, I got my notes on that right here. That would make it easier for me. And everybody kind of argues. So these are, you could go either way, two mm-hmm. years, either way. Boomers around 58 to 67 years old. So okay. they're, they're coming to towards the end of their career. Generation X, my generation, right? That would be 42 to 57. That's a great generation. A great generation. Way. Thank you oh, very much, is sir. Is that yours? Yeah. It's a forgo- I hope you ask about that because it's a forgotten generation. And yet we gave the world <laughs> oh, MTV. I'm not forgetting it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I would, I would argue if we get a chance to talk about this. Generation X actually opened a lot of the doors to the millennials. Oh, yeah. To what's going on with the Zoomers for sure. Mm-hmm. The millennials, you're looking at around 26 to 41. Woohoo! That's right. There you go. Typical, cheering for herself. And I should just take a picture of that and post it on uh, Facebook. Nice. Thanks. Bingo. Not, uh, Facebook, Instagram, you're my bad. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they write by 2025, they'll be about 70%, 60, 70% of the workforce. And then you got the zoomers, which are right now, now between 10 and 25. So they're okay. just starting to be in the workforce. You'll see the zoomers hit about a quarter of the workforce, maybe a little bit more by 2025. All right. Isn't there an, is there an alpha generation? Is that the That's little? That's the next generation. Okay. Yeah, that would be I would... Unborn to nine years old would be gen, gen alpha. And right. what I read, they were never going to be able to, they would never know physical money. Is that something you think? Just a little side note here. It's possible. You know, the world tends to be on a, a, a pendulum, kind mm-hmm. of swings back and forth. So it's, it's interesting. It'll be interesting what world they come into, you know, especially with things like meta. Be uh, Venmoing. Yes. For- and, you know, and just, will they be even leaving their house? Will they live mm-hmm. in the, the metaverse? Mm-hmm. Um, but again, generally when you see things like this, there's always a, a rebound to it, right? right? So you even saw, like I said, the Zoomers or the Gen Z rebound from some of the excesses of the millennials, including things like what you mentioned earlier, we were talking about, uh, like uh, um, Fire Festival. They oh, saw yeah. Fire Festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They saw Elizabeth Holmes, right, from Donna's, right? Yep. They saw the stuff that seemed excessive. And I would even say, we were talking about designing Anna, right? Yeah. They yeah. saw some of this stuff, so there's a recoil to that as well. Right. So talking about back to the great resignation a little bit with HR professionals, they're dealing with, they're losing human capital. That is the biggest struggle. Is that what you uh, would agree with right now? Correct. So what are they doing to fix this? How are they keeping people? Well, the challenge is right now is, uh, yeah, a lot of the CEOs and executive teams are looking at their HR people and saying, stop this bleeding. Yeah. And it's bigger than the HR people. It's the company itself. So I, I think a lot of them, unfortunately, sometimes are doing the most obvious, which is throw money at people. Right. Which, by the way, as you guys know, it only works temporarily. Right. Matter of fact, if you read the Wall Street Journal today, they did an article on companies are moving to quarterly reviews to give pay raises on the quarter. Wow. So that's part of, part of that's a function of 
of the mm. generation. It's also a function of what's going on right now with, with hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. So I think some throwing money at it, um, some of the, the um, kitschier things that were done before are not working right now. Right, like the pool tables and ping pong tables. Yeah. That, right, so yeah. Fast mm -hmm. Company in 2021 did an oral article, the end of, <laughs> of wacky gimmicks you know, yeah. are gone because people are like, you can do gone. this at home. <laughs> so I think what I think the first thing HR folks have to do is one, they have to really kind of understand the generations. Mm -hmm. So I, I think understanding them uh, is important. So how do you understand them? You got to listen to them. So do surveys work? Employee engagement surveys, they can. They need to be shorter now. Focus groups are more are, are better. Mm -hmm. They'll have better conversations. And of course, take care of things electronically too. Just kind of quick pulse survey. Yeah. So really trying to understand them. And then, and then part of it's letting it go of the old ways, right? The old ways are going. You know, mm -hmm. we are not coming back to work anytime soon, right? I would even say to the 40-hour work week probably should be questioned and will be questioned. Mm -hmm. That's a vestige probably from, right, the early 1900s, and then Ford made it official. Uh, and then our laws kind of back that up. But I, I think things like that will be challenged. Now, the, 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 the other challenge is you don't want to let the pen pendulum go too far. Right. And then, then you're enabling crazy bad behavior. But you've got to really get into, if people can deliver from home or in the hybrid or remotely or in the hybrid, um, man, you got to take advantage of that. Otherwise, people just will not do it. Like I said, I think a lot of, a lot of folks really are, especially the Zeds, they know how to work from home. We all got good at working from home, didn't we? So I didn't like it, but. Uh. <laughs> I, I did like, I missed the social aspect, which is That's my right. millennial speaking. That's but. right. Because millennials traditionally saw work as a community yeah. right. to, meet, to meet people. And often, you know, that, the millennials also brought around the time when, we, when companies relaxed all the rules around getting married or dating at work. Mm -hmm. I think what's really work. great about what we've experienced, and obviously nobody wants to go through a pandemic again, yep. but for leaders to really understand the value of different generations and how they, how they get work done, if the output ended there, and you didn't see the folks in the chairs, then just surrender to the fact that it's going to be different. Yeah. And because I've talked to a lot of like a lot of like I'm glad everyone's coming back. Well, if and there's a key word there, everyone, yep. not everyone. If but if you if you had a great culture before the pandemic, then you probably didn't experience you know a lot of um, dysfunction inside your organization. That's right. If you had a weak one to begin with, that's right. You've got you've got your hands full. So if if, if there brilliant. were leaders out there, um, it, I, I never liked people picking on my generation because people no. picked on every generation. But if you were going to encourage a leader, how, well, what are some things that they could do to learn about different generations? Yeah, you know, I think the first I love that. By the way, I love your comment too. You, you say if you know if you had good engagement while they're at work, you're going to ha probably have good engagement when they're re working remote. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have to change up what you do, how it manifests itself, but you're still reaching out to people. Before mm -hmm. you walk down the hallway, now right. you're calling them on the phone or you zoom them just for the fun of it. So I, that's brilliant, brilliant, Scott. Thank I had you. I had a leader. This is a funny story. Yeah, I had a leader. He came up and uh, someone said, "Hey, the, uh, the leader's putting candy on my desk every day. That's such a nice thing." And, then, and the guy sitting next to him said, ah, that's not a good thing. He goes, why? He goes, he puts candy on there because he checks the next day that's to right. see if you were there. So you better either throw it away or eat it. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Right? Ooh, that's, yeah. that's a quiz. Yeah. Huh. Quiz. So that answers your question. So I, I think the first thing is really you have to, you have to be comfortable letting that go, right? Those yeah. days are gone, you know. And, and we've seen this where, where companies, I think a large technology company not that long ago sent everybody home. And then the new leader came back and brought them all in. Right, so you got to understand that actually it can be done. How can it be done? Mm -hmm. You still got to build community with your teams, but you have to pick your points differently now. That's what we do, right? We work from home. We're all remote now, but we have office days where we come in, we have pizza, and we connect, and we do different things. Um, and then people are actually pretty good. And then they have some small team connection days, but they're actually working really good. And actually, my generation and my company is even older. They've already adopted it. Mm -hmm. So I think you just got to get over the, you know, you know, mm -hmm. or the guy, you know, the CEO stays at 8 o'clock till 8 o'clock at night and expects yeah. everybody to do the same. You know, if you, if you want to hold on to that, good luck, I would say. Yeah. Now, again, it doesn't mean you let people go crazy. It's not Lord of the Flies, right? But, 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 but I think you said something really important before. What is the, I think, opportunity for companies right now is that these generations really want to be graded on results now. So I would tell you as a consultant for many years of my life, I would always say, say become results oriented. Mm -hmm. Don't just pay somebody because they worked hard or, you know, they, 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 they tried. 
mm-hmm. pay people for results. I mean, that's what consultants have been trying to tell companies through through MBOs, right, for many years. Yep. Now we have opportunities to say, yep, you want to deliver it? You want to do it again at 2 o'clock in the morning on the beaches of Bora Bora? That's your choice as long as I get it. Because what you'll see also with the younger generations, there's this move, again, to that gig economy. They, mm-hmm. they see themselves as independent contractors, right? Freelancing. Freelancing. Yep. So you, how can you create that environment even with inside a company mm-hmm. where they have that? They could have multiple um, – careers even within a company. Mm-hmm. I think it's good. So you'll, you'll find that what's important to the younger generations is not necessarily moving up this ladder, but it's more of a, a spider web. They want to get different experiences, different exposure, learn different things as opposed to be kind of focused on one function. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as an employer, how do you create a value proposition for new hires? I, I know we mentioned, you know, the yep. survey, the engagement, getting to know what they really want, to kind of figure out their PI. What do you think? Yeah, I love that question because that's part of what HR people have to do. They have to think about both the external employment brand, mm-hmm. right? Because, you know, we live in this internet world, man. We are connected. I could look up any company on Glassdoor oh, or yeah. Reddit or different things and learn a lot about it really quick, right? <laughs> or I could even go on LinkedIn and say, oh, Scott, I see you work at this company. I could ping you and ask you about it. So, right. so I, you have to understand your your um, your uh, reputation is in the community and it's in also the the internet community as well. So it's easy to do it. So I think really kind of guarding what that is. Mm-hmm. Local com- companies are need to be involved in their communities. So to answer best your question, I would say listen to what people, particularly the younger generations, listen to the questions they ask when they interview nowadays. Mm. You know, e- even before the benefits, they ask questions like, you know, what what is your DEI? You know, what's your diversity plan? Right. You know, are you zero waste? You know, what are you doing for the community to make it a better place? What is really our deeper mission of the company? Right. These are the questions yeah. that they're asking. That gives you an insight of like what's really important to them. So I. That's so true. Back back when I interviewed, which was four years ago, I don't think I asked those, but I asked more, you know, do you offer pet insurance or do dogs come yes, to work? That's right. Like what little different things. And it's totally evolved. Now you're right. That's what people. Yeah. I think that's a know. great, what a great point to actually maybe even encourage employers because, and I agree with you, I'm at the age where, you know, we would hire someone, we talk about 401k, healthcare. And I can remember even when I was younger, to be honest with you, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I was like, I don't care about that right now. <laughs> uh, and I'm 57. So if I'm looking at somebody much younger than me, but maybe instead of telling, it's just asking, Yep. what's mm-hmm. important to you? And, uh, you know, and I think we're even learning that today. We're just learning a lot of interesting questions by instead of telling, people, what we offer, what we have, or what's important to us, is asking what's important to them. Well said. Well said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're there. And then and then, then I would say, too, experiment a little bit with that, right? So we talked about, you know, should we someday, might we, to your point, might we pay people in crypto, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting just to, to talk about? And do you have any crypto? Impact? I do. You do? <laughs> you know, it's funny. That's it's another funny. podcast. A buddy of mine, he sent me some money on Venmo. Oh, yeah. And, and this is how bad I am. I'm like, I don't know what, like, I don't know how to put it anywhere else. <laughs> and then on Venmo, it said, you want to buy crypto? I'm like, sure. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter is asking you to do an NFT as your profile picture. That's now. right. Yeah. So. It, so it's a different mm-hmm. world. So I, yep. so I think asking is a lot. And then, you know, and just being a little creative. And again, but mm-hmm. remember people, there are a lot of things that still hold true through companies for mm-hmm. We're, as long as I've been in the workforce, right? You still want to be appreciated. It just looks different now, right? Yep. You still want to be respected. It still it just looks different now, mm-hmm. right? You want to be tapped into the best of you. It, it, it's all the same stuff. It just looks a little bit different. So, so I think part of it too is it, we can. I know I have. I always like to say I have the heart of the millennial. That's because I just want to be younger again. But, <laughs> but I do. I, I do. I, I, me and my wife, when we got married early, we said we don't want to give each other people, uh, each other presents. We want to give each other experiences, which was travel for us, right? Yep. So they're very idealistic, which I like that. I, I don't yeah. want to lose that part of me ever. Even mm-hmm. if I get to be 90, I don't want to lose that part. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, you know, there's a lot of great things that are kind of interesting, that are kind of kind of fun. And you'll see the generations do adopt it, right? Because remember when right. Facebook came out, <laughs> that was cool for the young kids. And now the, the, the biggest users in the Facebook are grandparents. I know. Hey, yeah. I still like Facebook. Hey, there you go. You millennial. I'm you. an old soul. Okay. There you go. <laughs> That's such a millennial thing to say, by the way. <laughs> I'm an old soul. I know my truth. <laughs> Hashtag old soul. What do you That's think right. the like the long term play is for these generations? So, what's the long game? Uh, the long game, I think, um, is to be determined. 
I, I think you'll see, I, I think what we're, I think we've crossed a line where we're not going back, which I think is healthy and good. Cause I, I think for me, you know, especially as when I was consulting, I'd always try to these big culture programs and do these things. A lot of times the companies didn't follow through or mm-hmm. follow through like should have. So a lot of companies have been, particularly large companies, smaller companies, not so much. Um, but the large companies, the Fortune 500, they are toxic in many ways, right? So we saw a lot of things that didn't make sense uh, to us. So I, I think the long term is to be determined, but I, I think companies are going to really have to get good at that. Because traditionally, right, they would say, our people are our, our biggest asset, right? And then they would sit at the, the town hall and you would see 60 slides on marketing and 60 slides on finance and 60 slides on operations. And at the end, you put in the HR slide. Oh, by the way, you guys are yeah. our most important asset. One slide right. at the end when everybody's yeah. sleeping a little bit. Yeah. So I, I think that moves forward. I think the opportunity um, the technology, again, because there, it's really just an extension, particularly of the Zoomers, uh, I think tapping into that will create a, create a good environment. Mm-hmm. And the other thing, too, we didn't talk about this, but I remember our story, too. You know, what's important to the Zoomers and the millennials is time. So time is more important than money. When I worked at the Children's Hospital out here, we would try to get nurses, particularly the younger nurses, to work work the, the weekends or the night shifts, right? Because right. I'm pretty sure people are are still sick at night or Mm -hmm. on the weekends. (laughs) And of course it was kind of traditional convention that, you know, the more senior nurses, they paid their dues. And now they get to work the cherry schedule and the younger folks coming up have to work the weekends and the after hours, it wasn't happening. And we, I remember we would try these differentials, like I'll give you, you know, $2 more an hour if you work the weekend. No, I'm good. $5 an hour. (laughs) No, no. How about $10 an hour? No, my time is more valuable than money. So, these are real things that mm-hmm. we have to come to terms with. And I, I think it's healthy. I think it'd be a really, I, I think if we do it right, we can come out more productive and better. But I, you, there will always be forces that will try to bring it back. That's a good, I love that example. I used to work a night shift at a former job and time is valuable. And I realized I didn't want to miss holidays. I didn't want to miss the, the social aspect of it. And I like to sleep at night. So that was definitely, yeah. but that's everyone, all my aged people were the night shift. So that's, we, we were social at work. That was nice because yep. we were able to hang out and be tired together. So I bet that was interesting. It was. <laughs> Any, I have so much respect for night shift workers. Yeah. It do. is a incredible thing to learn and do. Off yep. circadian clock. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So while we're staying on our little Zoomer topic yes. here, what benefits do they like besides time? Like actual physical benefits that HR can offer. I'm not thinking it's medical or dental. Do you have any idea of what ones they do like? No, I, I, I go back always to, I think they like to be, because they like to self-determine, I think they like customized benefits. Mm-hmm. So I think what was important to you or you might be not important to me. So I think you're going to see a lot more customization needed by folks. You know, I, I think you'll always see from from a healthcare point of view, a lot of the, lot of the basic benefits, the healthcare, the 401k, their price of admission, they're just kind of expected. Right. Now you could say, well, that's entitled or not. It doesn't matter. It is kind of expected. So I think they have to be strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, I think it really ha- what revolves around how they how how they work. Mm-hmm. You know, perks. It, it, it's it's the perks. You know, I always think about. You know, we talked about um, like work life balance. That was a big thing for Gen X, right? And that's one of the that's one of the bastions we broke through. We talked about work life balance, but yeah. work life balance mm-hmm. was really work life balance on the company's terms. Right. Yeah. Hey company, can you help me get some work life balance? Hey, can I can I do this? Yeah. Then the millennials came in. <laughs> I was talking to one of my workers. She's a millennial, and we were kind of sharing some some of this. And she said, "Oh yeah, life comes first, and then there's work." So we went from work life balance uh, based on the company giving it to me to man, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have a life and to kind of do my own thing. Mm-hmm. You'll see with the Zoomers, they're actually they kind of have slid back to this thing called work life balance, but it's done on their terms. Yeah. So, and that's really so, it's good. so really, it's like an outdated term. It is. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. It is. I, you know, I think one of the things, too, which I love is the fact that this, like, just this well-being of, of humanity. I mean, because I think what good employers are really realizing today is that the employee brings their whole life to work. The good, the bad. I love that. I love they it. bring their whole life to work. That's right. And when you can um, accept that, as an employee, you have to accept the fact that if I'm going through a divorce, I don't leave my divorce at home. Right. It comes right in the front door. And when you accept that and provide resources, then your probably ability to maintain a workforce is probably going to grow. That's right. And, and, it, and it was the opposite, right? So it years was. ago when we started in the workforce, it was, you know, you know, you know, you know, 
um, come to work, leave your problems at the door. Yeah. It, just, it was just kind of ingrained in it. And then we start saying, well, you know, there is that holistic person, right? And we just don't want warm, warm butts and seats. That was mm-hmm. kind of the mantra, right? Mm-hmm. In, the, in the 90s and the early 2000s. We want to kind of tap into the best person. Now that's, that's magnified to the point where, you know, there's a lot, wellness is spiking right now. So you're seeing a lot of focus on wellness. Yep. You know, I think life skills are really kind of funny. Um, cause a lot of the, a lot of the younger generation, they don't have life skills cause they spent their life so much in the virtual world. So that's why you're seeing a spike again yep. in financial <laughs> finance, learning about finances and financial mm-hmm. stuff that they didn't get. So you're seeing companies now offering life skills classes. as a part of the benefits. You guys were asking about benefits. You're seeing that as part of the life skills. Very interesting. Yeah. So boomers are going to be gone here in the next hey, few hey, years. Hey, hey, hey. You're not in the boomer. Boomer, you're an Xer. You're a Gen oh, okay. We're hanging on. All right. So how are the Gen Xers going to get along with these millennials and these Zoomers? So let's talk about Gen Xers. Scott, you jump in anytime. The it's forgotten true. Coming from age. The forgotten generation. <laughs> so we were small because because that's when the pill came out, right, before our generation. So we okay. were a smaller demographic. That's why we are partly forgotten. But we brought you MTV and a lot of cool haircuts. So that was pretty cool <laughs> of us, for yeah, sure. Like MTV, yep. Um, but the, but you would, I, would, I would offer that Generation X offered a lot of this stuff up. We were the first ones to talk about work-life balance, right? Mm-hmm. We were trying to kind of make businesses healthier. And that's where you saw the advent of a lot of gurus like the Stephen Coveys of the world. You know, they became big during this time, mm-hmm. right? Um, also, we hated this, right? We hated when I went to work and uh, I saw somebody there and I was out producing them. I was 24 and I was out producing somebody who might be 30. And I'm like, dude, I should get paid as much as them. And I'm, I'm out producing them. And people are like, you gotta pay your dues, Michael. We hated that stuff. Yeah. And now that's kind of normal. We were yeah. big scorekeepers. We were big scorekeepers, oh, right? So, him. so yeah. So I, I but, but we, we challenged. We started realize, hey, we could speak up to the big boss, mm-hmm. right? And, that, and, and there was options too. What else did we do? You know, my generation before me and my dad generation, you pretty much worked one job, right? Mm-hmm. As an exer, you're expected to work multiple jobs, right? You're supposed to build up your resume by having different experiences, mm-hmm. right? So that's a big shift. And my dad like, oh man, you're going to be okay. You're taking another job. Yeah, I've been there three years, four years. I've learned all I could. I'm on, on to my next gig. Yep. So I think a lot of these things opened up to the millennials. And, oh, yeah. and then the millennials really kind of took to the next level. And the Zoomers are kind of, I think, kind of sof- making it a little bit more sophisticated. Mm-hmm. But to answer your question... I think deep down, I'll speak for myself. I think deep down, though, a lot of Gen X, we're a little jealous of the millennials and the Zoomers because they're, they're benefiting from all our, our breaking down the wall, Scott, mm-hmm. of some that's of questioning authority, of, of, de- of really demanding a healthier, better workspace. But, Michael, I mean, honestly, do you, and this is just a question I have for you, is don't you think, and I'll just speak for myself in regards to my <laughs> relationship with my wife, don't you think that you've benefited from that? Yeah, now I am. Absolutely. That's a great point. Yes. You you don't, I, 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 I've appreciated my life. It used to be kind of compartmentalized Yeah, and it's Mm -hmm. not so much right now. And actually life is, it's for me, it's, it's a little easier than it used to be. (laughs) I I love it. No, I agree with you. And I think that's, we kind of, like I said, I think we're a little jealous of it because it came to us later in our careers. There's an openness now. Should they pay us for that? I think so. I I think that sounds fair. (laughs) Kenzie. Shaw. Scorekeeping. Scorekeeping. Hello. Hello. Speaking of scorekeeping, you know, the other thing I was thinking of, um, we were talking about time, right? And, you know, I think, Kinsey, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago, right? We were talking about PTO. PTO. So a lot of companies are going for this idea mm-hmm. of unlimited PTO. Yep. And I made a comment like, and then like the, the generation Xers, that's what we wanted, but we're still kind of, we're kind of, we have one foot in the old way and one foot in the new way, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I said, I forget how it went out, but I, I said, I bet you that generation X person still kind of keeps track of her time. She's like, she does. And you, no way. <laughs> Yeah. I know what yep. I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to deliver. <laughs> they said it's it's open PTO, and it's open PTO as long as I get my work done. So yeah, I, and I think we, I think the generation we like it, we admire it. We're a little jealous that they had it more than us. But yeah, I, I think actually there's a nice blend right now, and I, I think too, particularly with the Zoomers, we're gonna love what we always wanted, which was like true mentoring, not just a mentoring program where I'm gonna match you up randomly, mm-hmm. but like true mentoring, true teaching. Um, and, and we benefit that too from the technology, right? Because because of the the younger generations, I'm fairly tech savvy. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's kind of how training is going to evolve too? It's yes, more mentoring, less official. 
you'll see that with the tendency right now with the Zoomers, well, you'll see that more mon money is being spent actually by individuals than by corporations on training. Mm -hmm. So th that's re that gives you insight. Th they want to learn a lot. They want to learn a lot of different things. Some of them really want to go ultimately on their own. They see that, that's self-determination. So the more skills, right. the more exposure they, they got is good. And, th and, they're, and generally their training is they train themselves. Right, so they're very self-directed in their training. <laughs> it's YouTube, and I always just say all the time, you know, one time, you know, our hot tub thing in the bathroom broke, and and I saw two YouTube videos, and I fixed it. My wife thought I was brilliant. I was, and I just did what they did yeah. on the video. <laughs> so, but 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 that was new to me. I was like, wow, that's something. This is how these guys, these guys, this generations learn. So they're mm -hmm. very self-directed uh, in their training and their development. Um, plus, a lot of it's just in time, so it's some micro learning. I, I need to learn this now. I'll, I'll I'll learn it when I need to to learn it. Mm -hmm. So I think you see those tendencies. But I, I think you'll see with the Zoomers, they they uh, because they are so so off and disconnected and online. I, they they actually prefer a hybrid. So even though they prefer to work remotely, they still crave that community even more than the millennials. Right. It's a different version of it, right? The millennials are, hey man, I'm going to work as my community. Not that the Zoomers are like, hey man, I want to do my own thing, but you know what? I want to hang out with people and stay relatively healthy. That's part of my mental health is because we're pack animals as humans. So I think mm -hmm. they have an insight to that. Agreed. Is there any way to maybe tap into that generation to maybe mimic what they enjoy doing, like off the clock? Yeah, and I, I, I would even say off the clock is probably an outdated term, right? Because mm -hmm. off the clock to them is life, right? Mm -hmm. That's their living. So, yep. yeah, so I, I, think, I think that's a good thing, by the way. I, I, you know, I, I had an Australian friend when I was, and he's still my friend, growing up, and he always said, you know, Australians, you know, live, uh, uh, work to live. No, live to work. And we Americans, I'm getting this wrong. You know what I'm saying, right? Where the Australians were like, hey, we work. And, and They'd so rather we live. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I think there's something healthy and good with that. Again, if it goes to the other side or there's bad dependency on the government, probably not a good thing. But mm -hmm. I think this new generation is creative and motivated. They want to do things. You know, when you even think about training, right? You asked about training. Think about this. I mean, we make fun of the younger generation sometimes, sorry, Kinsey, right? Because okay. they, they can't do basic things like, like put gas in the car. <laughs> but man, they could pull up the most complex TikTok and like 20 minutes later, nail it. Yeah. Yep. So there's, there, there's wisdom in that, man. So if they're motivated, if something that they get value from or see makes their life better or they get something out of it, they'll figure it out. And I think that's, that's a brilliant thing to tap into. Really I was quickly. having, I had uh, lunch with this, I don't even know how old he was. And he was on his phone. You know, with a BlackBerry, you could feel the, the screen, right? right? And then he was he was on his phone, and he was just talking to me, looking at me. And I'm like... While texting you? Yeah, While texting? Uh-huh. And he was really good at it, like fast. And I was like, I'll give you five bucks. If you can text me right now, what time is it in London? He goes, what's your phone number? And he gave it to me. He was on an iPhone. Yeah. And, and it, it came... I was like... I can do that, Scott. You can? Yeah. I'll give you five yeah. bucks. Okay. After okay. this, five dollars. She, yeah. she just grew up with it. That's that's like, wh yeah. what's that? Give me something mm -hmm. challenging. Yes. It's just so normal who you are. It's like for me and you, right? We learned it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of funny. And them, that's, the, you know, that's what they learned. So it's just kind of, like I said, it's an extension of who they are. Well, what do you think made Zoomers so different from all these other generations? Is it the technology and social media and how they've learned in school? Or how, why are they so different? Not yeah. in a bad way. No, no, I think, you know, again, I, I would say a little bit is a, uh, is a rebound from some of the excesses of the millennials. I think that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the millennials really were, were brought up during the um, um, self-esteem programs that we realized probably weren't the greatest thing. I think parents have dis different sensibilities now as well. I mm -hmm. think that we saw the, the bulldozer parent or the helicopter parent. So we saw a lot of that and say, well, it's, maybe that's not the best thing to go forward. So I, I think the Zoomers, like I said, they're they're much more competitive, which which, which we didn't see for a while. Yeah, and I uh, wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Yep. <clears throat> Basically, you and I, we created the millennials. Well, it was actually- Our generation. Our, and a lot of the boomers. Yeah. Actually, the boomers were the parents yeah. of the millennials, the first, at least the first wave of it. So mm -hmm. we need to compliment the millennials for creating the Zoomers. Yeah, I should say yes, 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 yes. Yeah, <laughs> not yet, <laughs> not yet. No, I didn't mean you. No. Oh, yeah. the yeah. older I am on the lower side of the millennials. There you go. That's probably why I like TikTok. So. No, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. You're in the second wave. Yes, mm -hmm. and even that you can break that down. I've said all crazy things, yeah. but but in the end, I, get, I what I would say, you know, to be 
how do you make that work for you? Whether you're a CEO, a manager, you're, you're doing the benefits in HR. I think it is that listening piece. And then what can we learn, right? Because there's always been the rift between the generations, right? People mm-hmm. thought Elvis was too much, right? There's always, there's always something. People thought MTV was a bit much too, right? For our age. So I think you got to get over that and say, man, what can we learn from them? Mm-hmm. And then the stuff that probably isn't working, how can we be a good generation and guide them to something better? Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I, at my heart, man, I, I love that. I love being idealistic. I love experience. So there's a lot of things that resonate with me anyway. And there's a lot of stuff like, holy cow, you know, I can't relate to you. I, mm-hmm. you know, I, and I, to share a story about this, right. I was, I was giving a talk to, um, a bunch of, uh, credit union CEOs, right? And there was one who's clearly a generation X and she was really smart, really awesome. And we were talking about, you know, what to do, what, what business needs to do. And I was like, well, you got to create community. They like to do things in, in, in the public. I mean, uh, the community or help the, sorry, help the world, do something positive for the world. They like to be in community and they like to live online, right? So she's like, oh my gosh, that's so true, man. One day I went to my team and I said, what do you guys want to do? Let's do something cool. And they came up with literally going to the gas station just down the road from them and looking at people. If they felt they needed money, they would pay for their gas, buy them something or, or give them some money. And, and I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. She's like, yeah, they thought it was the greatest thing. I said, why? Because She goes, because, you know, they were doing something good for the world and they were hanging out. And she's like, and what? She goes, and I bet you they took a lot of pictures of it and they posted them on the gram. She's like, oh my gosh, I hate that part. She's like, yeah, but they love that part. So don't discount that because that's important to them. Even Mm -hmm. though she didn't particularly like it being an ex, she that was a bit much. Um, It it made sense. So I I think that's a great example of what what kind of moves, particularly the millennials, Mm -hmm. right? Making a difference, building community, and I'm kind of sharing it with the world because that's where we are right now. And that's where you tap into your millennial too because you understand the social media world in that most jobs that I like as a social media media coordinator, I guess, I think that really came about for this millennial age. Cause I don't know many 55 year old, 60 year old social media people. So I think our team was one of the first to build this role and yep. then it kind of grew throughout too. So, because we like to post it on social media. I even media. think, it's, it's, you know, it's what, you I, are. Yeah, mm-hmm. what I love today, and there's a lot of debate in regards to social media and its impact, and I'm not going to go down yep. that rabbit hole. <laughs> but I do think when you look at what's going on in Ukraine right now and the beauty of social media and yep. the love for humanity in that yep. is, uh, and, and you've done just an amazing job for, oh. uh, for us. Uh, and, and I think if you're a business and, you, and you're not adapting to that in right. one way or the other, That's right. I mean, you're going to have a really, I'm not on TikTok. I'm probably not going to do that TikTok. <laughs> we'll make you do TikTok. Probably out <laughs> uh, when it gets to that. But uh, yeah, I mean, and, and even, you know, when you think of Facebook and the different generations, I mean, there's just a lot of people really curious about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Matter of fact, we took, you know, for me to do social media, which I'm okay at, you are? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I had to go to take a week course boot camp to learn it really good. And, then, and I have to work at it. There's just no doubt I have to work at it. So what I ended up doing, I, there was one f- person in our office and I said, hey, do you want to become a mar- social marketing person? And she's like, yeah, it's super, super sharp. It hasn't been challenged yet in life, which is co- sometimes happen with the millennials. And I said, this is what I need to do. Well, because that's what she does. She does social media. She can do the texting, you know, or while she's talking to you and find out what time it is in London. That's like, that's not, that's like what Kinsey said, right? That's nothing. So her saying like, this is what I need. Is, here's some basic formats. Here's kind of the messaging what I want to do. It's like, okay. And it was just, it was just her living life. To me, it was like, I got to really focus on this. Mm-hmm. I have to schedule <laughs> post to Twitter on Tuesday, post to Facebook. You know, yep. it, it was painful to me. Hers is like, it just flowed. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Grew up that way. Yeah. But oh, so I have one last question here. Okay. Um, kind of putting a bow on everything with the great resignation in this generational shift. Is this going to be forever or are we going to, the pen, you said the pendulum swings back. So yep. do you think it'll be job hopping in short term or will people become lifers again? Or what do you think? If you had a crystal ball. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I think there's general big cycles, right? Voltaire said the more things change, the more they stay the same. But I think we have crossed some lines that we don't come back from. I think there'll be some retrenching of some stuff. I think you'll see some folks kind of come back to it. But I, I think a lot of it has changed. I don't, I don't like particularly the remote working, people kind of working on their own. I, like I said, I think you'll see the next wave of the 1099 or the gig economy, the free agent economy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you'll, you'll see a lot of that. I think, you know, I think, like I said, it, it's unknown. I think it'd go in a lot of directions. I could see companies someday, even big companies having 
50% of their workforce being full-time and then that other 50 being transient. You know, that's a little crazy, but I can see that. So, cause it's possible cause people want different things out of life. And the yep. reality is too, part of this is we, we do have a lot of first world problems when you could talk like this, even when you could say, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. That's relatively new yeah. in our world, right? <laughs> Before it's like, you know, oh, you know, and I, I think the big part of it too, to keep in mind is people have options now. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, my dad probably when he grew up, he probably had two options. And that was to become a, I grew up in Schenectady, New York, and that was to become a police officer or work at GE. That was the options. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, now, you know, when I go up, I thought, oh man, I, one, I left Schenectady, right. Families didn't leave Schenectady. So we are, we are a mobile society right mm -hmm. now. We can move anywhere we want to. If we're remote, we really can move anywhere we want to. Oh yeah. Um, two, we could learn anything we want, right. College is being questioned because there, there's so many great, there's the yeah. MOOCs like the Udemy's and Coursera's of the world and edX, right? You can learn, like we said, most anything you really want to online. And there's a lot of other education op opportunities. So I think that genie's out of the, the bottle, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I think the companies that really kind of embrace the newness of it, you know, not go wacky because you can go wacky on this stuff, but really kind of embrace what this means, do the listening and try to figure out what makes sense. Because if you say you have to work 40 hours, my answer would be, well, why? Because we've already done it that way. That's yeah. not a good answer. So I, I think some I think some of this stuff has changed forever. I think there will be a retooling to some degree because people we are still pack animals, right? Because yep. there are some bad effects of social media. There's no doubt about it. They were saying that um, Zoomers tend to be on their screen ten hours a day, which hurts my brain. Yeah, right. Um, but I understand why, because that's what they do, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're nodding to that. It's just kind of normal to you. Yep. <laughs> but I think you'll see a retrenching because, you know, we know for a fact that, and there's a lot of great studies on this, that uh, the younger generations are disconnected from community, right? And they've kind of lost some of their abilities to be, read micro cues. Mm -hmm. They feel really uh, disconnected from nature. So that's why you see the national parks just going through the, through the roof in terms of attendance now. Yep. Um, so I, I think there'll be a resettling on some stuff that look probably a little bit more traditional, but I, I think the workplace of the future, man, it's going to be a, it's going to be a zoom world. Someday we'll be doing this uh, podcast and holograms potentially. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. There you go. So Scott, do you have any more final questions or comments for Michael? No, I just really appreciate, you know, thanks for everything that you do. Uh, you know, for us and our customers, and um, thanks for uh, really helping our listeners and some some great advice. I like your accents when you go into different generations Sorry. and people. It's pretty good. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you're a storyteller, and you're really good at it. So thanks for being here. Thank you. I definitely value our partnership, and I, I, I appreciated the lively conversation. Of More course. to come, for sure. Yes. It'll be fun to watch it. And apparently from our director, it is 8.17 p.m. in London right now for Perfect. our listeners. There you go. <laughs> So if you have any questions or follow-up, we will have Michael's contact information on our website. Um, if you have any topic ideas or questions for us, you can contact me at Kenzie at HealthierBirthdays.com. Or Scott at HealthierBirthdays.com. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. <laughs>